talk to me about if, you know, we were working with a perimenopausal or a woman in that period of life, the best nutritional approach. I know you're a big fan of high protein. Your recommendations for protein are actually way higher than I would ever tell a client because they would like look at me like I was insane if I told them to eat as much protein as you do. So why don't you talk about protein intake, carbs, and just an overall nutritional approach during that period. If body composition change is the, is the goal, you know, for clients listening, if you're not familiar with some of the terminology, losing body fat, maintaining, building muscle. Yeah, exactly. So again, the first thing is ditching those trendy diets of like fasted training, intermittent fasting, ketogenic, because it's based on male data and it doesn't work because we know women do better in a fed state regardless of age. And when I say fed, I mean 15 to 30 grams of protein and around 30 grams of carbohydrate before training. And then after training, around 35 or 40 grams of protein can be your real meal, but you want to book in your training with food. And part of that is because of the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus is an area in the brain. It's responsible for appetite control. It's responsible for thyroid function, endocrine function. And for the baseline calorie intake for women without any kind of dysfunction is 30 calories per kilogram of fat free mass, but for men it's 15. So men can get away with fasted training, they can get away with high, uh, high fat, low carb, all these kinds of crazy things and their body will be okay. But for women, it's not true. Now, when we're also looking at what's happening in perimenopause, women are becoming more insulin resistant because uh, estrogen and progesterone are responsible for glucose homeostasis. And we're becoming more anabolically resistant with regards to muscle tissue. So when we look at it that way, we know that we have to do our good lot of training and follow it up with that 35 to 40 gram protein dose. We'll read research where women didn't respond to a 20 gram dose. And so they don't look to increase it. But in the few that have looked to increase, women don't really start to get a muscle protein synthesis response until that 35 gram mark, which is around that three and a half gram leucine mark, because so, we have more anabolic resistance. So if I'm not incorrect, they're not seeing a muscle protein synthesis at 20, but it starts to happen at 40, where it happens much lower for men. Exactly. And that's exactly know, telling a client that they should eat 40 grams of protein after a workout or in a typical meal is like, you would think that I just told them to walk on their hands. It's I know because part of it is I blame the, um, the eighties with, yeah. you know, the supermodels, the Kate Moss, or I guess it's the early nineties too, the Kate Moss and the Cindy Crawfords and all the calories in calories out and fat burning and, you know, you don't eat carbs and don't eat protein. Cause you'll get bulky, but not in bold of it is women don't eat enough around the times that their body needs it. So like women will get up, they'll have a black coffee, they'll go training, they might have a banana or half a protein shake afterwards. And then they're like, oh, I'm full till lunch or after lunch and they get busy. And then they might have lunch at one o'clock, which is probably a salad with some lean protein if we're lucky. And then they'll have dinner and then they'll go to bed and they're bookending their calories more towards the back half of the day, but all the stress has occurred earlier in the day. So their body stays in a breakdown state, stays in a catabolic state. And the brain perceives that as, oh, shit, we need to conserve. So you start to get thyroid dysfunction. You start to get more accumulation of body fat. And it's really, really, really difficult to budget until you start to maneuver your nutrition around the stress points in your, in your day. So, you know, women are like, oh, I'm doing intermittent fasting. I really want to do this. It's like, well, do more time-restricted eating where you don't eat after dinner and then you have breakfast. Right. Because then you can get some of the benefits of, the health research. But if you're an active woman, by the nature of exercising, you are getting that metabolic switch. You are getting some autoph autophagy. You're getting all the benefits they talk about from fasting through exercise. So when we start talking about it that way and they go, okay, now that we're in our late 40s, early 50s, we have to look at carbohydrate intake because we're a bit more sensitive. So we want the bulk of our carbohydrate to be from veggies and fruit, except around training. 
around training is a time where you can have more simple carbohydrate, especially after training, when your body's like, ah, I need some, let's, let's bring it in. So we can really leverage the training points to allow people to manipulate their favorite foods and not feel deprived. And then when we talk about protein, it's really hard for people to imagine what 40 grams of protein looks like. So we really talk about it in dosing across the day. For every meal, you want a protein source that's around palm size and a thumb worth of lean protein for every meal. For every snack that you have, you want 15 grams. What's 15 grams? It's two thirds a cup of Chiabani yogurt or it's two hard boiled eggs. So people can start to kind of visualize what protein is. Because when you tell someone, oh, you need to eat two grams per kilogram of body weight or around a gram per pound, and that's 120 to 160 grams a day, people are like, what? But it's so essential now to really moderate your carbohydrate intake with protein to help with the insulin resistance, but also because we are more anabolically resistant, we need that protein to keep building that lean mass because we don't have estrogen to help stimulate it. So just to reiterate that, because I know my clients are probably, you know, again, still trying to do the calculations um, in the States. If a client was 150 pounds, you know, you would recommend about 1.25 uh, grams per body weight. So 175, 180 grams of protein a day or higher. So we say two to 2.3 grams per kilo. So it's around 1.1 to 1.3 grams per pound. Yeah. So your yeah. weight times 1.1 or 1.3 is, is like, and is that a baseline Monday through Sunday? Or is there a, on days that you train, there's this and off days you do this, or is that kind of the average that you want to hit, you know, overall? When we're doing heavy strength training days and heavy, um, uh, actual training days, you want to hit the higher end. The baseline for like what we want to hit on a daily basis is about 1.8. So that sits around that one gram per pound. Yeah. Um, but really it's the dosage where you're having it at regular doses across the day, instead of concentrating on actual absolute macro that you wanna intake, just think about it as how much I wanna have at every meal. So if you are someone who eats chicken per se, you have uh, one chicken breast on lots of different colorful fruits and veg and you're topping it up with some beans, maybe some nuts, and then you're going to hit that 40 gram mark pretty easily. Um, but it's just the education is lacking in the States. Well, everywhere, really, because we've lost health education and nutrition within our school systems. Yeah. Now, is that, a, is that number based a, across the board, all body types, or is there, you know, a, so if somebody came in, they were, they weighed 350 pounds, you know, is that still the recommendation versus, you know, a woman that was 180 pounds that wanted to lose body fat? So if someone comes in and they're 300, then we really go on the dosing through the day where we're like, okay, after exercise, we're hitting that 35 to 40 gram. Every meal we want around 40 grams because when we're up that high with our body weight, then you can definitely tip over in the amount of calories that they're consuming in a day. So when we get down to the 180, this is where we can look and say, okay, we can look and use those guidelines, but we want to take those guidelines and again, make sure you're getting it across the day. So some people will be like, well, I'm 160 and my ideal weight is 140. What should I go on? We know that the higher protein intake also helps with body fat loss because it is allowing you to conserve your lean mass and also increasing the amount of circulating amino acids that your body will use for other functions instead of stripping down your lean mass because you're in a calorie deficit. 